I lab tested a Pro One water filter to see how well it performed. After numerous requests from our viewers, I wanted to assess the system's ability to remove contaminants both in treated city water and untreated river water. Is it a suitable option for both everyday use and emergency preparedness? Stay tuned to find out. As you look at the data, please keep in mind that these were just two real-life tests and the results are neither comprehensive nor conclusive. Prior to testing, we ran 100 gallons through the system over a period of two months to ensure the filters were already well used. And for accurate test results, we followed a strict sampling process provided by the lab. We filled a large bucket with the water sample, swirled it to make sure it was well mixed, and then collected the pre-filtration sample directly from the bucket. Then the post-filtration sample was taken from the Pro One itself. We'll look at the data based on the Health Guidance Level Benchmark, which prioritizes human health and is much more stringent than the federal MCL standard. In our city water test, the Pro One performed extremely well in addressing aluminum, copper, fluoride, lead, and manganese, which were all 100% removed. Additionally, total THMs were only reduced by 47% and chloroform by 56%. There are a few substances that actually increased post-filtration. But first, if you're finding this video helpful, give it a like and let me know down in the comments if there are any other water filters you'd like to see us test. Also, make sure you're subscribed with the bell turned on so you get notified about the next video we upload. Post-filtration, barium increased by 116%, calcium by 119%, chloride by 20%, magnesium by 261%, sodium by 36%, strontium by 58%, sulfate by 69%, and bromodichloromethane and potassium actually appeared where they were absent in the pre-filtration test. I was surprised to see this because I couldn't imagine that the filter elements themselves were actually introducing a disinfection byproduct into the water. I had a chat with the chemists at the lab, and the most plausible explanation for this discrepancy has to do with the volatile nature of this compound and our sample collection method. So we actually tested four similar stainless steel gravity-fed water filters at the same time, using the same water sample from the five-gallon bucket. The Pro One system was the first of the four units filled. And then the pre-filtration sample wasn't taken from the bucket, until after all the other systems were filled. The most likely explanation is that there was bromodichloromethane in the influent water to begin with, but because it was at such low levels and due to its volatility, by the time we took our pre-filtration sample, the remaining BDCM in the bucket had already dissipated into the air. So if this theory holds true, it suggests that the actual concentrations were likely higher than the observed three parts per billion, with the Pro One filters possibly removing some percentage. But without conducting additional testing, we can't definitively determine what occurred or the extent to which the filters removed this VOC. Now moving on to the other substances that increased post-filtration. The good news is that none of these are above the health guidance level and a few don't pose any risk to human health. Remember how I mentioned that we tested four systems using the same water sample? Well, in all four tests, we saw a similar increase in a few of these substances. The initial 100 gallons of water that we used to prime the filters for our test contained elevated levels of a handful of ions, which subsequently came out in the filtered water. And we think this effect is likely temporary and we do not suspect an issue with any of the filters. But again, additional testing is required to confirm this hypothesis. In the untreated river water test, the Pro One completely eliminated all bacteria including E. coli, Enterococcus, and total coliform. It also eliminated aluminum and manganese and reduced the iron by 80% and the sulfate by 35%. Phosphorus increased, but it wasn't detected in the city water sample, which eliminates the possibility that the filters themselves introduced it to the water. The Pro One filters are not capable of reducing phosphorus, and levels of phosphorus in river water can fluctuate. And despite efforts to minimize inconsistencies in our sampling process, the filtered sample may have had higher concentrations than the unfiltered sample. So this could be one explanation, but with this limited data set, we can't say for sure where this anomaly is coming from. The Pro One did a great job eliminating metals and fluoride from the city water and bacteria from the river water, but I was a bit disappointed with the lower reduction levels of the disinfection byproducts. And the discrepancy of the increased ions is not an issue specific to the Pro One, as we saw similar data for all four of the systems we tested. If you're looking for a portable, gravity-fed water filter for emergency preparedness or filtering untreated surface water, then the Pro One is a great option to consider. However, if you'd like to filter treated city water, there might be better options out there that provide greater reduction of disinfection byproducts. If you want to get your water tested or purchase the Pro One, you can find a link to each in the description. And if you enjoyed this one, stick around for one of our other gravity-fed water filter testing videos. Click or tap the screen to keep watching.